Hey, welcome back, everybody. It's time to meet our community, the Hispanic business community here in Orange County. Powered by the Orange County Hispanic Chamber of Commerce and Orange County's only community radio station, OC Talk Radio, streaming live from our studios here at the University of California, Irvine's Beal Blind Innovation Center. With a special guest today, El Presidente himself in here, <laughs> Ruben Franco. Hey, Ruben. Hey, Paul. How are you? I'm good. Who'd you bring with you today here? We brought one of our great members today. We have Erica Osorio from uh, California, or Commercial Bank of California, excuse me. Uh, she's been a, a great member of ours. She's very active in the chamber, and so we're very fortunate to have her here and to be able to talk to her about some of the things that are, that are going on. And the way we like to start our podcast is, uh, Erica, tell us a little bit about yourself. Oh, wow. Where, where can I start? But uh, thank you so much for having me. That's that's the first thing. But um, well, I've been with the bank for quite a few years. I started uh, back in 2004. Um, but about more about me, uh, I went to school for fashion design. Okay. So I really never in a million years thought that I would end up at a bank, and um, I did. And I actually love it. I've been with uh, with Commercial Bank of California since then. Uh, I really tell everybody I grew up with the bank, so it's it, it's been a journey and it's every day of learning new things and I love it any way that I can help the community and our clients. Well, that's great. Well, so. tell us a little bit about your you and your family. Oh, where can we start? Let's see. Well, um, uh, uh, we're a big family. We're six of us, four girls and two boys, and we all grew up here in Orange County. Um, I am the youngest of the the sisters. We're very close, and uh, it's all about family for us. Every Sunday, we try to get together and do our uh, brunch, our Mexican breakfast with mimosas. So, wow. okay, <laughs> uh, very close knit family. So, very proud of that. So that's great. And you have kids. Yes, married and have two little wonderful babies. Uh, my oldest is going to turn five next month, and my youngest is three. And uh, the one that runs the show is pretty much my three-year-old. <laughs> so yeah, they keep me busy. Oh, and we were ta when we were talking earlier mm -hmm. uh, before the show, you were talking about high school already. So you're already planning high school. Oh yeah. Okay. Uh, when I I knew that I was pregnant with my first one, I started. Um, doing research and reviewing every school around my area and everywhere I could. So I tend to plan ahead. So um, I'm just a planner. That's that's my thing. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, I, I, I try to see what, uh, what the options are so I can better prepare myself for whatever could have come our way. That's great. Mm -hmm. And the bank you work for is the largest Latino owned bank in California. And mm -hmm. one of the largest, I think in the the country, obviously. So tell us a little bit about uh, the bank. Well, thank you for bringing that up because I think uh, that's one of the main reasons that it gives me so much pride to be there. It's it's a Latino owned bank and most people don't, don't know that. And thank you for bringing that up. Uh, uh, and we are one of the largest in California, the largest in California. I, I really don't know about the nation, but it gives me it gives me a lot of pride. And just the fact that uh, our part of our philosophy is to empower our community because uh, we're part of that. We're part of that growth of the Latino market, the uh, diverse uh, market. So it, it gives me a lot of pride to be part of that. So Yeah, mm -hmm. well, definitely. I serve on the board of the U.S. Hispanic mm -hmm. Chamber, so... I see it nationwide and, and obviously uh, locally as well, obviously for what I do, mm -hmm. just the growth of uh, an explosion of, and there's more Latinas actually starting mm -hmm. businesses uh, all over the country as well. So it's, it's pretty exciting to see and be part of uh, that conversation. Now you're in charge of treasury sales. So tell people what that is. So they, they understand, I understand what it is, but what, what, what is it to, to the, our audience can understand what it is? Well, basically, well, I, what I like to say, it's uh, I'm like a doctor for your business. I like to analyze and review what your needs are before there could be any issues. And that uh, entails identifying what would be the best services, products available to you when it comes to managing uh, your incoming and outgoing funds for your business. 
um, all the way from your day-to-day -day operations to what you predict for the future with pu future uh, products and services. Uh, but I also help with the everyday managing of the account. So it's a full package with me. Got <laughs> so, it. Mm -hmm. So if I have excess funds, you can help with excess funds as a, as a business owner, right? You have, or or um, how do I manage my cash flow, right? And then how do I, uh, you know, project for the future or, or for seasonality or whatever it may be business-wise? So. Yes, our focus... Um, is to look at the the entire picture the entire relationship where can we assist and where can we help in in every way that we can so if if you have a funding account that you just put aside and you need security we have products for that if you need your everyday operating account uh, if you need to go out and take payments um, at events we can handle that so uh, we try to look at the entire platform of services for the, your entire needs. So yes, that includes any type of security funding. Mm -hmm. Well, that's great. Mm -hmm. Let's go back to you personally. So you mm -hmm. said you have a big family. Where did, so what high school did you go to? I went to Stancia High School in Costa Mesa. Oh, Stancia High School. Yes. Okay. Yes. I'm that's an great. eagle. <laughs> You're an eagle. All right. <laughs> I went to, after that, I went to FIDM and uh, I, I was, I was here in the one in Orange County for a year. The second year was in downtown LA. Downtown LA. Yeah, so that was that was a trip. Uh, I didn't have a car, didn't drive at that time. Um, tried to never ask for anything. Did it all myself. Uh, I would get on the train, go to downtown, and I still had a full time job at that time. So always always worked as much as I could to help my parents. So you majored in fashion. So how did you get? How did you go? What was a bridge from fashion to where you're at today, though? Wow, that story is <laughs> a famous story. Um, I worked at TGI Fridays just to pay back my loans from school. Sure. Uh, just It was supposed to be just a summer thing. I was working the, the sh uh, lunch shift, and the CEO and CFO of uh, Commercial Bank of California at that time uh, would come in and have uh, a meeting there every every Wednesday, I think. Well, it was so consistent that every Wednesday they would come and, and they would always end up being in my area. I would always help them. So it got to the point that they said, you know, I, we think you would be great at our bank. We need somebody like you with your personality uh, to greet our clients when they come in and answer phone calls. I started as, a, as the receptionist and uh, I just couldn't see myself at a bank. I'm like, what am I gonna do there? I'm so creative. I love to paint. I love to use my hands and put things together. So me in a bank, I'm like, I can't even imagine. So I said, you know what? I'm gonna give it a try and take the job and look for something else while I'm there. Uh, well, I got bored after two weeks. I said, you have to give me something else to do. This is too boring. I can't just sit there and wait for a phone call. So they started giving me work. And within six months, I was, I was a teller. Six months from that, I was a lead teller. And, and I continue to be that person today. I still want to learn every single day. I want to learn something new. And and that's why it's given me the, the opportunity and chance to, to grow so much in the company. So I'm always pushing everybody else to move up with me. Let's, what can we do together to make ourselves uh, learn something new every right. day? So yeah, it's, it's been, it's been a great 20, almost 20 years. Wow. <laughs> well, you would, you would have thought they would have noticed that right away. You're, you were good with people because that's what's kind of the role you had is, is get you in front of people and, and obviously you do that now, but uh, that's a great thing for you because I've every time we've been around and you've been around the chamber, you know, you've been just fantastic. You've been very you. engaging and stuff. And tell us about why you like being part of the Orange County Hispanic Chamber. Uh, well, first, uh, it's so warming and it's so welcoming with not just with me, but with everyone. But what I've noticed is that there's a, a bigger sense of community with you guys. You guys have always been so warm and welcoming to, to me and everybody else I've seen. But 
it, it's not just another member when you guys welcome somebody. It's almost welcoming somebody into a, a new friendship. So yes, we're here for business. We want to refer business to each other. But at the end of the day, it, it feels better when you do that with friends. And that's how the OC Hispanic Chamber of Commerce has made me feel that I'm, I'm a friend and, and I'm, I'm somebody that they can come to and vice versa. So, right. and that's, and that's why we named our podcast, mm -hmm. what we named it, right? Mm -hmm. Our community mm -hmm. is your community. It's us sharing our community with everybody. And, uh, and we want to be welcoming. We want to be, you know, invite people into what we do and be part of it and have fun. And, you know, a lot of people say we're, we are kind of a fun, organization you too are. right not, not just a, a base it's not your dad's chamber right no a no bit, a little bit a little bit different and stuff and and always so much fun um yeah the estrella awards yeah i have to hand it to you it was amazing it was so much fun i loved it thank you yes. and, and what erica's talking about is our annual estrella awards where we mm -hmm. honor people in our community who've done you know just great great things and don't always get the the honors for, for all those type of stuff mm -hmm. from volunteers to corporates to people who just do stuff day in and day out. And this, this past year, we had the big time achievement for entertainment there and he was there and that was just a, a great event. But thank you for mentioning Australia mm -hmm. and we're looking forward to scheduling next year's event right now, actually, as we speak. So it'll be oh, either perfect. next April or, or May and we'll have six or 700 more people there wow. as well. So. But well, thank, keep me posted. <laughs> thank you for participating. Hey, you have a great story about, um, uh, I don't even know if he was your, he wasn't your fiance yet, but he was your boyfriend and you have a, a trip <laughs> or you, you were able to get him, uh, to see Messi. He's, he's, he's a big, your, your husband now is mm -hmm. a big soccer fan. And, yes. uh, tell us a little bit about how that happened. Cause it, what you told me was pretty, pretty unique. <laughs> Well, um, when I, when we first started dating, uh, I noticed immediately what a big fan he was of uh, soccer, but I knew that since day one, I've known him since we were in junior high oh. and he's been playing since then. So, so um, was it love at first sight in junior high? Well, I, I don't know about that, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, he played soccer then in, at Estancia and, uh, he just continued to play, but I knew how much he, he liked it. But once we started dating now as adults, um, his passion never, never, you know, veered to another sport. That's his number one sport. So, uh, the chance that I could take to actually, uh, do something for him, I took him to Barcelona to see Messi play. Because uh, we knew that at, at that point that his contract might change. So um, so I wanted to make sure that I, we would make that trip and, right. and go see him before that would happen. And he ended up playing for a few more years, but, but we had that chance. The, the plan was to go to Paris for a couple of days, then Barcelona for the game and his actual birthday. That was the day of the game. Um, and, and he ended up surprising me when we were in Paris, because that's when he, he actually proposed. So, uh, the trip was for him, but he ended up surprising me and, and it was amazing. So, wow. Yeah, it was great with well, the Eiffel tower behind us. And it, I mean, it was, it was beautiful. You set a high bar. That's a little, oh, yes. It's a little hard to, to replicate. Yes. Paul, Paul was telling us earlier, the only thing he ever got was a t-shirt out, uh, <laughs> out of something like that. That's, that's right. I got to go have a long talk with my wife. Yeah. <laughs> well, you, you stepped up. That's great. Um, tell us a little bit more why uh, it's important, uh, you know, because we run a small business development center, right? We help small businesses every single day. Why is it important for you to, to help businesses? I mean, what do you, what, what passion do you feel there with that? Well, it comes down to, um, I even wrote it down. I, I tend to write everything down. <laughs> our, our bank's philosophy is something that I truly believe in. And it's something that I truly live every day, working there and being there for so long. Um, and that's what pushes me to want to do what I do. So if you don't mind me going over no, it with you, absolutely. our purpose is to promote, promote life health and to me, we tend to work more when we care about something, but they push us to take 
breaks. Take your time. Family is first. So um, what else can you ask when your own your own boss is telling you, no, take care of your family first. So yes, you end up working more because you enjoy it so much. So um, that's a huge part uh, to keep everybody in a more peaceful and happy environment is by giving us that that chance. So right. it's been great. Our vision is to transform the way you think of banking. Because we're we're a bank, you know, there's how many banks out there. But what makes us different? What what, what makes you stand what makes us stand out from the crowd? And what it is, it's I I would it's us and our dedication to our clients. Uh, we've had clients that we've had since day one. Since the day we open our doors to now, which is 20 years, we still have the same, some of the same clients and we have seen them grow since then. We know their family, we know their kids, we've seen them grow. Uh, and to be part of that growth of their business and the growth of the family, it's just something that I don't, it's very rewarding to to see that and to be a part of it right. so uh the last one our mission to empower our team our clients and our community and that's the part that i i tend to focus so much on because it without a community we wouldn't be where we're at you know we need each other we need our community we need to empower where we're at in order for all of us to succeed uh, especially for me uh, it's so important to to be out in the community in a diverse way with all of um, the groups that I'm involved with it, it's for a purpose is to to recognize that the bank wants to grow in those fields in those areas um, not that not just because we're a Latino owned bank it's because we see that there's a need so that's yeah. great mm -hmm. If you're just joining us, mm -hmm. um, we have one of our great uh, members here, Erica Sorio with Commercial Bank of California. Thank you for joining us on Our Communities, Your Community podcast. Thank, Thank you. you, Erica. Thank you. Well, there you have it. Another great reason to tune in each and every time to meet our community, the Hispanic business community here in Orange County, powered by the Orange County Hispanic Chamber of Commerce and Orange County's only community radio station, OC Talk Radio, streaming live from our studios here at the University of California Irvine's Beal Applied Innovation Center.